this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to solve the triplet paradox. This paradox is a variation of the famous twin paradox, and it is often invoked by anti-relativists who desperately would like relativity to be wrong. But they are just making fools of themselves by exhibiting their total lack of understanding of the theory. The point is that, as for the twin paradox, the triplet paradox is a non-existent paradox, as we shall see. So, in this variation, one triplet, which we will call Alice, remains on an inertial space station in deep space, while her two sisters, Betty and Chloe, travel in opposite directions with the same time-dependent speeds with respect to the station, and they come back. The reason we consider deep space meaning that we are far from any massive objects such as planets, stars, and black holes, is to prevent anti-relativists from throwing temper tantrums and claiming that we forgot to include gravitation. There is no gravitation involved at all in this problem. So, the two travelers accelerate away from Alice, then coast for some time, decelerate until a complete stop with respect to Alice, then they come back in the exact same fashion. Note that I used here rockets with dual thrusters so that they can accelerate in both directions without having to perform a U-turn maneuver. Thus, no acceleration due to rotational motion needs to be taken into account. Now, the reason why anti-relativists claim that there is a paradox is that they systematically make the same novice mistake purposely or not, who knows. They always make the same mistake that consists in relying on the loose statement according to which moving clocks run slow. The problem is that when they invoke this statement, they have no clue what they are trying to apply it to. Typically, their reasoning goes as follows. Alice sees Chloe and Betty moving, therefore the theory claims that they age less than her. However, Chloe in her own frame sees Alice and Betty moving, so they age less than her. Same for Betty, she concludes that her two sisters age less than her. In the end, everyone is aging less than the others, which is a contradiction, thus relativity is supposedly wrong. As I already mentioned it, the mistake comes from the loose statement, moving clocks run slow. The equation associated to this statement is the famous time dilation formula. The most common mistake when using this formula is ignoring that it is valid only if the time t prime is a proper time. In other words, t prime must be the time between two events as measured in the frame where those two events happened at the same location. Another common mistake comes from being unable to specify clearly the events to which the formula is being applied. So, we want to solve the apparent paradox. What does that mean? It simply means that Alice, Betty and Chloe must all agree on their final age when they meet again. And in order to show that, we must calculate how much time elapses for each sister and show that the result is the same no matter from which sister's point of view we do the calculation. That's what we are going to do, and I propose here two different types of resolution. In this first video, we are going to focus on the standard textbook problem in which the travelers move at constant speed with respect to Alice during their entire journey except at the turnaround where they instantly change direction. This problem is not very realistic, but it can be solved by using no more than 8th grade math and it provides useful insights. Then, in the next video, we will see how to solve the problem in a realistic case by considering an acceleration that is physically achievable and it will involve only some basic calculus. So. In the simplified version of the problem, we are going to assume that Betty and Chloe are traveling at speed c over 2 with respect to Alice until they reach some space stations that are addressed again with respect to Alice. And then they come back at the same speed. Let us say that Betty and Chloe's destinations are located one light year from Alice. First, 
we want to calculate how much time elapses for each of the triplets according to Alice. So, from Alice's point of view, she is at rest and Betty and Chloe are traveling at the same speeds in opposite directions. It is trivial for her to calculate the outbound trip time. By definition, the speed is the distance traveled over the time, thus the outbound trip time is equal to the distance divided by the speed, hence it takes two years. By symmetry, the inbound trip takes the same time, so the round trip time that Alice observes is four years. In order to predict the times that elapse in Betty and Chloe's frames, Alice will need the Lorentz factor associated to their speed. For half the speed of light, this factor is exactly 2 over root of 3. Now, the outbound trip time measured by Alice is not a proper time, because the departure and the arrival don't happen at the same location. But for Betty and Chloe, the outbound trip time is a proper time. Thus, Alice knows that the time that she observes is the proper time dilated by the Lorentz factor. As a result, she knows that Betty and Chloe's outbound trip proper times are given by dividing the time that she observes by the Lorentz factor, hence root of 3 years. The same reasoning applies to the inbound trip, so the round trip proper time for Betty and Chloe is 2 root of 3 years. As a result, Alice concludes that Betty and Chloe end up with the same age and that they are younger than her. Let us analyze now the situation from Betty's point of view. For her, it is Alice who travels at speed c over 2 and Chloe travels even faster. The first thing to note is that the distance of one light year between Betty and Chloe's destinations and Alice is a proper length since we define the space stations at the destinations to be at rest with respect to Alice's space station. So, Betty concludes that this length is contracted in her frame and has a value of root of 3 over 2 light years. With respect to Betty, the space stations are traveling at speed c over 2, thus her outbound trip time is the contracted distance divided by the speed, which results in root of 3 years. The inbound trip is symmetrical, so her total round trip time is 2 root of 3 years. Betty also know that both her outbound and inbound trip times are proper times, so she knows that Alice will observe a dilated time. Thus, she concludes that the round trip takes four years in Alice's frame. Now, the real new thing in this triplet apparent paradox is for Betty to determine Chloe's proper time. The standard mistake consists in saying that since Betty's outbound and inbound trip times are proper times, Chloe would see them as dilated. So Betty would conclude that TC is greater than TB, which would contradict Alice's conclusion that TC equals TB. Also, from Chloe's point of view, she would conclude that it is TB that is greater than TC, which is another contradiction. Once again, people who make such a reasoning have no clue what they are doing. The times TB and TC previously calculated by Alice are Betty and Chloe's proper times. That means the time measured by their own wristwatches. But what they are actually calculating is how Betty and Chloe's proper times would appear to each other if they were not changing direction. These are completely different quantities. So, they are making two mistakes at once. They are mixing up proper times with apparent times and they are ignoring the fact that Betty and Chloe change frames at the turnaround point, which introduces time shifts because these events are not simultaneous in Betty and Chloe's frames, as we shall see. So, what is the solution then? Well, we simply have to define clearly what we are calculating. First, for Betty to predict what Chloe's proper time is, she needs to know how fast Chloe is traveling with respect to her, and for this, she knows that both their speeds with respect to Alice are c over 2. This means that Chloe's speed with respect to Betty is obtained by applying the relativistic velocity formula. Plugging the numbers in gives a speed of 4c over 5. 
Betty can also calculate the corresponding Lorentz factor to be 5 over 3. Now, let us look at the situation at the very beginning of the journey from Betty's point of view. In her frame, she is at rest, of course. The space stations are traveling at speed c over 2, and Chloe is traveling in the same direction at speed 4c over 5. Also, Chloe's destination is located from Betty at the same contracted distance as Betty's own destination, which we already calculated to be root of 3 over 2 light years. From there, Betty can predict how long it will take for Chloe to reach her destination. Both Chloe and her destination are moving, but Chloe is moving faster so she will eventually reach it. And this will happen when the distance that separates Chloe from Betty will be the same as the distance that separates Chloe's destination from Betty. So, let us express the distance between Chloe and Betty as a function of time. It is simply Chloe's speed times the time, that is 4c over 5 times t. For the distance between Chloe's destination and Betty, it is given by the initial distance root of 3 over 2 light years plus the space station speed times the time, c over 2 times t. And now we impose these two distances to be equal and we solve for the time. This gives a value of 5 root of 3 over 3 years. And now that we know the time, we also know the location where this event happens, 4 root of 3 over 3 light years. Note that this time that Betty observes is greater than her own proper time, which means that in her own frame, Betty will actually change direction before Chloe. This means that the events corresponding to Betty and Chloe arriving at destination, which were simultaneous in Alice's frame, are not simultaneous in Betty's frame. In Betty's frame, she arrives first, while in Chloe's frame, it is the opposite. But let us keep in mind that this time t is the time of Chloe's at-band trip that Betty would observe if she decided not to change direction. She knows that this is a dilated time, so she can predict Chloe's outbound trip proper time, which results in a value of root of 3 years, exactly the same as her own proper time. Now, for Chloe's inbound trip time, we could use symmetry and find that it must be the same as the outbound trip proper time. But if we do this, we can be sure that anti-relativists will throw another temper tantrum. So, let us see how we can explicitly calculate Chloe's inbound proper time and prove once again that there is no paradox. So, let us consider again the situation from Betty's perspective at the very beginning of the journey and let us define the event E as Chloe's arrival at destination. We just found what the space-time coordinates T and D of this event are in Betty's initial inertial frame. And we know that it takes a time root of 3 years for Betty to arrive at her own destination. This means that right before Betty changes direction, the time coordinate of E is reduced by root of 3 years. At this moment, Betty switches direction, which means that she changes to a new inertial frame that moves at velocity 4c over 5 with respect to her previous inertial frame. Thus, the space coordinates of E in this new frame are given by performing a Lorentz transformation at velocity 4c over 5. This results in an unchanged value for the space coordinate, but the time coordinate switches sign. This means that by switching to a new inertial frame, the future event E changed to a past event. This illustrates again the relativity of simultaneity. Now, since in this new inertial frame Chloe already switched direction, this implies that her speed with respect to Betty is still 4c over 5. This also implies that Chloe's inbound trip distance is the same as the outbound trip distance, and so is the time needed for Chloe to cover it, namely 5 root of 3 over 3 years. Once again, this is a dilated time, so Betty concludes that Chloe's inbound trip proper time is root of 3 years. The last consistency check that we can make is that 
although Betty and Chloe don't turn around at the same time in either Betty or Chloe's frame, their returns to Alice's station must necessarily be simultaneous in all frames. Indeed, we know that the event associated to their returns have the same space-time coordinates in Alice's frame, which means that when we change to either Betty or Chloe's frame, these events will be transformed in the exact same way and will therefore remain simultaneous. This is confirmed by realizing that since in Betty's new frame Chloe already started her inbound trip to root of three over three years earlier than her, Betty will see Chloe arriving after only root of three years, which is the same time as Betty's own proper time. So the conclusion is that Betty sees Chloe arriving at the same time as her. Putting everything together, Betty arrives to the exact same conclusion as Alice. The same reasoning can be made from Chloe's point of view, so the three triplets all agree on each other's elapsed time. Thus, there is no paradox. In the next video, we will see that there is no paradox either when we consider a realistic acceleration.